So let me start. Okay. Okay. So hello, my name is Michael. And today I'm going to talk about solving Burger's equation with quantum computing. Oh, jumpman, message go wrong. Ah, there, there. So yeah, I want to talk about how to solve Burger's equation by quantum computing. So yes, I'm a, I'm a fluid guy, and I'm working. I'm double, I'm double major on aerospace engineering, which is of course my mid, of course my first major is physics. But I'm still a little bit of a fluid guy. So I want to today. I'm going to talk about how. Quantum computing is applied on computational fluid dynamics, which is we call it CFD. So main goal of CFD is to find the flow field. Now this flow field is kind of a vector field that matches each point in space to a velocity vector, which is really similar to an electric electric field or, or magnetic field. And this so by applying an f equals ma to this flow field we can earn navier stokes equation which is looks like which is shown on the slide and this equation itself is nonlinear because of this one of this visit uh, viscous term and that convective term because of these two this is nonlinear equation and it is there and its analytic solution is not known yet and by removing this pressure term and gravity term, we can earn Burgers equation. We call this as a Burgers equation. So this equation itself is Burgers equation, and yet it is one of the key equation to that is used on fluid field. And above Burgers equation, it's analytic, it's analytically solvable when our right hand side is zero, which means analytic solution is no when there is no viscous term. And if not, numerical methods are required. And even if there is, even if, and even it is analytically solvable, there's, there are some numerical methods that, that sometimes it cannot be analytically solved due to the, um, the FX term, F, FX that boundary condition. So it depends on the boundary condition when it, it is analytically solvable. So yeah, it's hard to solve this Burgers equation. And today I'm gonna to talk about inviscid Burgers equation. Now, if I talk about inviscid Burgers equation, its application is various. And one of its application is this waveform. As you can see that solid, as you can see in the left picture, left picture shows the solution of Burgers equation. As you can see the X, X axis is a space term and Y axis is a velocity term. And as you can see, as the, as the time flows, it, it's kind of over, it's not, it shows a kind of a distribution and overlapped and, and even and, and at some region, one single X value has a two velocity vector. So this means it has a really similar um, motion, just like a wave. So this is one example of application of Burgers equation. Now, as I told you guys last uh, at the last presentation, solving Navier-Stokes equation takes tons of time. It's at least O n, and O n and log epsilon log one over epsilon. So it takes tons of time. And when I gave you a last presentation, I introduced uh, one method to speed up by using quantum memory layout and by using quantum linear server. Now this time, I'll go introduce the reducing, re reducing the time by using quantum amplitude estimation algorithm. Now it's kind of different from what I introduced to introduce you guys last time and this time. So what is this quantum amplitude estimation algorithm? So we call it QAEA. Now let's say there is an one, operator as shown in A. And what our main goal is to make the estimate the amplitude of phi one, and which is shown at the A. So to estimate this A value, we, we, can, we can use this Q operator, which is some kind of a <clears throat> combination of A and some kind of a combination of 
reflecting over phi one and zero. Oh uh, yeah. So by using these algorithms, but we, by using these kind of operator, we can find we can estimate the amplitude. So yes. So now I will introduce how this algorithm is used on finding the solution of Berger's equation. So step one, we have to discretize by space. So this Burgos equation itself is actually, it is nonlinear. So we have, we have to come up with an idea to linearize it. And to linearize the nonlinear equation, we have to discretize it. So yes, we are, we're gonna, so this, this situation we're talking about is a one dimension case. And we're gonna space this space into one, to the n values. So there are actually n points. And if we discretize this x one dimension space to m, we can change our initial equation as shown in the as shown in the tabula of the as shown in the slide. And let's substitute the red box into f u, f u j comma t. Then as you can see, u, u, which is u, which is velocity, which maps velocity to, which is connected to velocity and time. Since it has t, it, since it is dependent on time and space term, we have to update velocity at j position, but we have to also update it by time too, not only by space. So step two, since we disc discretized on space, we have to discretize by time. If I if we set an estimated solution to AI, AI, we can show we can by using the tail expansion, we can estimate a solution at ith moment at j j position. Now it's a bit complicating, but still, yeah. So what we have done is so far is just discretize, discretize by two times, and it is shown is shown at the slide. So original equation looked like this. So we, to find the solution, we have to, inter, so we have to integrate, integrate by time. So if you integrate by time, there is another tedious calculation comes up and another additional term shown like here. So yes, this is the height, how, how this is the how that this solution is updated by time at the fixed position j. So, so far we have, so far we discretized by space and time. So what we are doing so here is that, let's say there's a, some kind of fixed position j here. And at the, at one moment, which is t equals one, there's a one estimated solution a1, j comma one. And as the time flows, it is updated like this picture, just like this picture. So yeah. This is how we discretized by space and time. So yeah, this so we discretize it. We almost there to solve it. So step three, let's use let's applicate our quantum algorithm. So let's say the value of this a value value itself, which is parameter itself. Let's say that just y i and j, which at the fixed position and fixed time. So by using this by substituting this term. We can write we, we can rewrite this this equation to this. Now our key is to equate this this term. This term is a key equation that we have to address. And by address while addressing this term, that where is where the QA quantum amplitude estimation algorithm comes up. So if you use quantum amplitude estimation algorithm. It is known that we can estimate the value of integration, and yes, it can by using by applying QAEA, we can reduce the time. So, what? How the? So let me just let me tell you how the time complexity is um gets better. So let's say Q is a smoothness vector of function f, and if it's a classic comp determinant computer, that Time complexity is um, gets larger 
when the function itself is get it's more rough when the function is rough, is rough the time complexity increases now if you look at the quantum compute time, time, time complexity of time quantum computer there is no any um, any exponents so we can conclude that buffer the function is which is buffer the function f is we can there was a significant increase in uh, sorry decrease in time complexity compared to the classical CFD. So yeah, so let's, so yeah, we now, now we knew that, okay, so using quantum algorithm makes an advance on time complexity. So let's look at real, real results. So now the result that we are going to compare is this traveling shockwave case. So as you can, as you guys already know, it, the, when due to the compressibility of air, when the aircraft is moving at very high speed, there the shock wave is formed. And due to the shock wave, there is a significant decrease on velocity before and after. So after the shock wave is held, there is a significant decrease in velocity. So as you can see, the red dot is a quantum result and black line is a classical, classical CFD results. So at the time t zero, it is really almost um, there are almost there are almost no er no er no errors between the computer, classical computer and quantum computer. And as a time as a time flows, we can see the shock wave is moving rightward, and yes, it's moving rightward again, and it is moving rightward again. And as you can see at this, as the shock wave travels. There's, there are almost no um, error between the quantum computer and classical result. So yes, we, we can conclude that this quantum, using quantum algorithm can actually make the time complexity better. And it has a agreement, a variable error. And, and actually there's almost no error between the quantum result and classical result. But the problem with this paper is that this paper only suggests with the one digit one dimensional case so i think that the um limit of this paper is that this paper only suggests the case with the one dimensional case of course in real life we have to address with the three dimensional case which is more complex but this paper suggests only one dimensional case so i think if we it is is going to be more better if we can actually fix the we can apply this method on three-dimensional case. So I think the limit of this paper is that it is only it only adjusted one dimensional case. And yeah, this is the end of my presentation. <clears throat> Thank you. Any questions, please? Yes. Yeah. Hangul or should other than ね。私からの聞き聞き、あの、プレゼンテーションとかに参加してます。で。私、この時期、あの、あの、プレゼンテーションとかに参加してます。で。私、この時期、あの、あの、プレゼンテーションとかに参加してます。で。私、この時期、
원래 이제 똑같이 O N이긴 한데 근데 그 뒤에 붙는 그거를 좀더 개선시킬 수 있다는 점에서 네. 결국에는 이 논, 여기 연구에서도 분명히 말했던 건 뭐냐면은 퀀텀이든 클래시컬이든 어쨌든 그 공간이든 타임이든 그걸 엔딩분을 해야 된건 사실이다 라고 해서 네. 그래서 제 개인적인 생각으로는 그냥, 지, 그냥 이렇게 해서 이제 PD를 푸는 것도 좋지, 괜찮, 괜찮지만 그냥 퀀텀 리니어 솔버를 그냥 아예 쓰는 게더 낫지 않나라는 것도 제 생각이기도 합니다. 아, 네. 네. 아, 사실. 아, 네. 아, 네. 그, 저, 이제 사실, 네. 그러니까 이게 S, 그러니까 이제 저 S 푸사이 원이 제가 기억한 바로는 이제 푸사이 원에 대해서 대칭하는 오퍼레이터였고, 제로가 제 기억상으로는 X축에 대해서 대칭시키는 오퍼레이터를 알고 있었습니다. 저도 근데 저도 이거 사실 사실 저도 이 QA EA가 정말 이거 관련된 논문을 좀 찾아봤는데 아 그게 조금 많이 이해하기 어렵습니다. 네. 아네 맞아요. 그 논문에서도 그거를 예 그로벌스 알고리즘에서 약간 더 변형시켜서 그 하신 것 같더라고요. 아, 그러니까 이게 그 퀀텀 앰플리튜드 에스티메이션 알고리즘 자체는 이제 저 푸사이 원의 이제 그저 크기 앰플리튜드 자체를 이제 에스티메이션한 알고리즘인데, 근데 이제 어떤 연구가 있었냐면은 이 저희가 이제 결국에는 이요 부분, 이 부분이 결국에는 그 이제 평균 값이지 않습니까? 평 저걸 이제 잘 이렇게 변형하면 이렇게 이제 결국에는 저 적분의 평균 값을 이제 예측하는 것이 됐는데. 근데 이제 저 퀀텀 아, 앰플리트 에스티메이션 알고리즘을 쓰면은 저그 적분 값을 예, 그냥 저 적분 값을 계산하는데도 저 알고리즘 쓸수 있다고 알려져 있었습니다. 네 거, 거기가 조금 제 어, 난야 너 저도 만화제라고 제가 네아네네 네, 네. 네, 제가 근데 네, 네 사실 거기가 저도 좀 난해했었습니다. 네. 레퍼런스를 아무리 지져봐도 좀 어렵더라고요. 어, 잠깐 이거 채팅을 좀볼수 있을까? 아 그렇군요. 아 네. 제가 사실 조금 더 자이 좀 이쪽에 대해 좀 이해가 있으면은 더좀저 발표를 좀더 자세하게 할수 있었을 것 같은데 제가 잘 아는 게 유치 쪽밖에 없어가지고 발표도 참 그렇게밖에 못한 게참 죄송합니다. 하하. 아 그런가요? 감사합니다. 주변에 계신 분들 질문 더 없나요? 그 일찍 가셔야 되나? 아, 네, 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 네. 질문 좀 없으신 거? 어, 어, 잠시만 누가 질문한 것 같은데? 아닌가? 아, 네. 그럼 뭐 질문 더 없으시면 어, 여기서 발표 마무리. So if we don't have any more question, uh, let's uh, end this presentation.